I am very excited to be in conversation today with Lucinda Lent, Executive Hi. Director of LA Dance Project, and choreographers and dancers Bobby Jean Smith and Or Schreiber, whose work solo at Dusk will make its Joyce debut on May 10th. Uh, so for today's chat, uh, we will discuss the company's dynamic advances within the digital sphere, its return to live performance, and the curation of the four works um, that are featured during their Joyce season this week and next. Um, in particular, we will have the opportunity to dive deeper into the commissioning process with the artists of Solo at Dusk. Um, and since the company's inception in 2012, uh, LA Dance Project has carved a space for contemporary dance in Los Angeles. And for the next two weeks, the company returns to New York during what is their first tour in two years. Um, during the hiatus we all experienced during the onset of the pandemic, the company seemed to really embrace the possibilities of the digital sphere and what that offers, particularly in launching the company's LADP app um, and expanding dance-driven content through virtual platforms. Um, Lucinda, I'm wondering with your arrival at LA Dance Project coinciding with this time and bringing about a lot of these exciting ventures um, with the company that made dance performance and training accessible to not only the company members, but also to audiences and dancers worldwide. Can you share a little bit more about how those projects came to life and how they were maintained uh, throughout the past few years? The company is led and run by our artistic director, Benjamin Milpier. And Benjamin has always had this vision to make dance accessible to everybody. You know, that there should be no barriers for people to be able to see quality dance. So he would always had this platform kind of just sitting there that had never been utilized because we were so busy with touring and our own rep at home and performing in Los Angeles. So when the pandemic hit, it was just a natural pivot it was like, well, we have this platform, so how can we create an app, which is what we ended up doing, so that people sitting at home can still enjoy dance, quality dance. And, you know, we're a tiny team at LA Dance Project. I think we have eight full-time employees and three of us really spearheaded the project um, from the design. Alice Mathis, our amazing director of communication, stepped in. Chris Tynan, who is director of operations, and myself and Benjamin, of course, mm -hmm. to create the app. And at first it was mainly classes because we felt like that could be good revenue for the company. Obviously, we're a non-profit, so any additional revenue helps us commission phenomenal choreographers and artists. So uh, we did a lot of classes for the app. And then that kind of Benjamin said he, as a young student, it was difficult for him to find resources that didn't center around just the dance so we also have on our app a physical therapy segment we have a health and nutrition segment we have interviews with incredible artists not just dancers and choreographers so it's like a full picture of of the art form mm, wonderful yeah and i think the company's presence online also speaks to its larger mission uh, for bringing together a community and bringing dance to the city of Los Angeles. Um, and I think particularly with this program that features four female choreographers, yeah. um, I wanted to bring us to this moment where we're here at the Joyce um, and, and speak more about the five works with the four choreographers, Bella Lewitsky, Alan Hollander, Jamie Taylor, and Bobby Jean Smith. Um, can you uh, speak more about how Benjamin curated this program um, and what in particular about these four choreographers drew the company to their work? Right, well, I think the fact that it's other than all, it's mainly <laughs> women, um, was a happy accident mm -hmm. in a way. Benjamin looks at talent and artistry and he doesn't, he's blinded to anything else. So when he selects 
choreographers or when he's thinking about music or it's an artistic instinct that he has, that he follows. And um, that's why it's so exciting to work at his company. Um, so I think, you know, it's very important to him to revive old works, um, to continue to give them a voice. Bella Lewitsky obviously is originally from California, so it was important for him to have a piece from her in the program. Janie Taylor is a dancer at LA Dance Project, former principal at New York City Ballet, and she's just an all-round super creative person in everything that she does. She actually created with Bobby and all the masks for Solo at Dusk. So she's not just a dancer. And Benjamin has always seen that talent in her. So he he asked her, he said to her, you should create something, you should choreograph something. And she'd never really thought about it. Um, they do have that process in class with Benjamin or when they're rehearsing with him where he allows the dancers to create and he saw something in her. Um, and then Madeline Hollander is just super fascinating, interesting mm -hmm. person, highly intelligent. And again, Benjamin saw something in her that was unique and a voice that needs to be heard. Um, with Bobby and Orr, I mean, everything that they do, everything that they create is based in deep humanity. And I think that when you witness their work, like you can't help but be overcome by feelings and emotions, even though they probably, you're not trying to make that happen. It's what happens because, mm -hmm. and it's different for everybody. Um, and Benjamin, I mean, Bobby and Aura, I don't know if you know this, but we have brought them in as artists of residence at Los Angeles Dance Project for the next two years. I mean, Benjamin, myself, the company, we really believe in them and we want the world to share in, in the beauty of their work. So. That's kind of how it came about. But the program was solely put together and curated by Benjamin. Mm -hmm. And he really felt like the New York audiences would appreciate would appreciate it because mm -hmm. it's all interesting and different work. Yeah, it, it's very exciting for us here at The Joyce to be able to share this with the New York audience because it seems like it covers quite a bit of a range of genres and styles and perspectives on dance and what the moving body means. Um, and I think a wonderful through line that connects the company to your work is um, this ability to traverse both the digital and physical spaces. Um, I'm speaking specifically about how you two have made extensive work, um, both performing yourself and creating for others uh, for both the stage and the screen. Um, and you actually originally created Solo at Dusk for a drive-in performance that happened in um, I believe the parking lot of, of, of the company space. Um, and so this work has been transformed from that um, and having audiences within the confines of their cars experiencing the work um, to what I believe then also became a film um, of it. And now it's been transformed back into experience for the proscenium stage. Um, I'm wondering if you two could speak about how you navigated these transformations and what was revealed in the work um, with each iteration that you bring to life with the company? Yes. Um, well, <laughs> it's taken, I mean, it's been such an interesting ride and a huge lesson in problem solving. I oft, like we often talk about when we're making work that a lot of it is about how, how fun we can have with solving problems <laughs> and how creative can we be with it. And, so I think, you know, when we, um, when we were asked to come, when was it, August, July 2020, to start creating, it was, I mean, one, we were so thankful and excited to be creating at this time. Mm -hmm. It seemed impossible. And um, LADP was unbelievable in how they handled the situation. We were outside on a parking lot, one by one, so that's where the solo at dusk came. Um, one by one, masked, distanced. Nobody saw what each other was working on. It was pretty magical. Mm -hmm. And um, and even then it started to, every day it was kind of, the restrictions were changing mm -hmm. every day. It was like, they don't have to be masked. They need to be masked. Audience can sit on benches. They can't sit on benches. They have to be in cars. It was, it was changing. And so every day it was like, it was informing the piece 
in an amazing way, you know. And we also had fires, remember? We oh, had yeah. fires. <laughs> fires. And then the air quality wasn't good. Yeah, I mean, it was just endless. Yeah. 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 But it was kind of also, like, looking back, it was so magical in the way that it, it, it was creating the language of the piece. Mm. It was creating the isolation that we all were feeling at the time. It was creating this deep desire to speak and to express and to, um, to remember what it felt like to live passionately, to, to experience each other, to feel love, to mm -hmm. touch, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so we, we kind of followed the path of the different restrictions mm -hmm. and the piece revealed itself. Yeah. And then I think it just continued, you know, with, um, you know, Benjamin and Lucinda, they were like, let's film this and brought on Trevor who brought his eyes onto the piece and his, saw the piece through his lens, which is so inspiring to, you know, see another artist's point of view mm -hmm. on the piece. Mm -hmm. And then that kind of created a whole other like 3D experience. And now we will get to see the piece for the first time on a stage, mm -hmm. which is so mm -hmm. exciting. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I can't wait. Me too. Yeah, it's very exciting. And I think it's so interesting to hear how the circumstances have really become the the incubation period of this piece has been, you know, over the, the many past months and um, the shifting circumstances of how the, the work has come to life. Um, that the, that one of the universal themes, I believe, um, is this uh, deep investigation of loss and memory and rediscovery. I believe those are the three words that. Uh, or in the poem that is that accompanies the program note uh, you use to describe what the dancers are experiencing um, in in the reality that is is the piece, um, and those are themes and emotions that feel universally felt by all of us in mm -hmm. the last few years. And I am curious about uh, your process with the dancers collaboratively, um, how you brought those personal experiences and those themes to light um, for them. Mm -hmm. I think Bobby is very good with um, preparing in advance some tasks. Mm -hmm. So we come usually in the beginning of, of the process, we come with some tasks for the dancers. And mostly in general, our work is very collaborative with the dancers. Like the dancers are, if, if these weren't the dancers, the, the piece will look completely different. Uh, the world, the universe that we have created together um, in collaboration with the dancers will look completely different. Um, so yeah, so we, we start by just generating a lot of material, mm -hmm. uh, dance, mm -hmm. just dancing. Um, and what was amazing, because what Bobby just mentioned, that we did it one by one, um, and LA Dance Project was so game to, to you know, putting outside in the parking lot those, um, those podiums that, or like special floors to dance on, so we don't dance on concrete. Um, it just, it, and it was like, um, I want to say like two meters by probably four meters. It like was very, very small. And it just, it made the confinement. Mm. So like uh, us, Bobby and I and the dancer, so entangled with one another. And it, it became this magical kind of bubble for two hours each, mm -hmm. right? Each, mm -hmm. uh, each dancer, we had two hours with it, yeah. Lucinda mentioned a little bit um, of Jamie's uh, involvement in the piece, not only as a dancer, but also in the creation of the mass. And the costumes, for those of you who have, who have seen elements of the work, are these really striking flower masks that envelop the face. And um, and Jamie Taylor was the one who designed them. And I was really struck by Bobby, something that you mentioned in an interview with the LA Times uh, about how the idea came to you in rehearsal. Uh, you said that after all of this, this time of not seeing our faces, nature would take over and mm -hmm. overwhelm us. Mm -hmm. And from the suppression, something would grow over us. And that itself is, is a beautiful statement. Um, and I'm wondering if you could share a little bit more about what drove your choices in creating those masks. Yeah. Um, I mean, as said before, like the process is so intuitive. And with trying to create as much space as we can for everyone in the room and for ourselves mm -hmm. and um and and enough room that you know things can like flower like burst out mm -hmm. of you and so I think one time in rehearsal I was like yeah these people they're 
these people held things in so long that something started to grow. Flowers started to grow over them and they no longer, nobody could see our faces. Mm -hmm. But, and something about the flowers looked also, sometimes they're very beautiful, but sometimes they look like weird tumors or, or like stones or growths mm -hmm. that came from the inside mm -hmm. out of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those points of perspective can really change how you view something that mm -hmm. can be beautiful and haunting at the same time. Yeah. 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 Um, and to also borrow another thing that you mentioned in describing their work, this deeply human, humanistic um, approach to choreography. Or you mentioned a little bit of how Bobby comes in with tasks. Yeah. Do you mind sharing some of the tasks that sure. we asked the dancers? I remember we, yeah. we had letters. We, wrote, we, we each wrote letters that we would never be able to send. Mm. And, oh, yeah. Yeah. Each, each artist wrote a letter. We don't know what those letters mm. were, mm -hmm. and um, and then they would we would they would start to kind of create movement, expressing those letters, mm. and um, we made folk dances for a country that will never exist, or maybe does or will, or who knows? <laughs> <laughs> um, what would that folk dance look like? Mm -hmm. um, we created kind of uh, paths of towns that had disappeared. What would those journeys be? Mm. Yeah, we talked a lot about the town square. Yeah. yeah, the town square that no longer has, or just the memories of what that town square would be. Mm. Wonderful. And for each person, you know, the, the tasks are different. Sometimes you bring in a poem or um, a song that you feel fits them or, yeah, and ask a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, the, the words that are coming to me are fantasy, but also with some nostalgia and mm -hmm. some truth in mm -hmm. what it is that you're imagining um, yeah. for yourself in the piece. Yeah. And I also have to say, um, Alex Summers, who composed the music, yes. we had an incredible collaboration with Alex, and he was, he was creating the piece with us. So we were all kind of creating this world together. And mm -hmm. it, well, something cool about that is because we're outside downtown Los Angeles, the, the you know, the, the ambient noise is really loud. So we had people wear headsets to hear the music. And I think it was kind of magical mm -hmm. to have that because then it's like, you're just like right there. I mean, mm -hmm. it was like another happy accident because of our circumstances, mm -hmm. um, but yeah. Oh, wow. That's something I wish we could bring here. Everyone in their little headsets. headsets. Yeah. 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 Immersed in yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I was about to ask about the music in that, in that process and also the music of the other pieces um, in the program that um, also being a, a large draw for the breadth of, of music that is featured. Uh, yeah, if you could speak a little bit more about the caution with Alex and how that came about. Yeah, I mean, Alex is, he was, from the beginning, he was so receptive to, he, he, just, he just came on on board with wanting to collaborate. He was just there to let's let's make it together hand hand by hand. It's it was really beautiful to to see a, you know someone who has never done, uh, worked with dancers before mm -hmm. or choreographers. Um, I remember that moment before we opened where they decided to put the waves at the end of the show. Um, so we used like frequencies to put it on in the in the radios of the of the cars and as people left the show uh the waves the sound of waves st kept kept going until a certain you know this certain point oh, where wow. we lost the frequency yeah. and, it's like a, and yeah. i was like can you do that like it was for me it was mind-blowing <laughs> it's just like you know let the audience go with this kind of I think that's how we started it too, right? We started it with the way. Yes. Yeah. And so it was like a bookend almost mm -hmm. of like, yes. but I bet people were driving like, am I still doing <laughs> yeah. that way? No, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And, I, and I think Alex is amazing at kind of collecting these sounds that feel so familiar and then kind of distorting them into something new, which I feel like the waves, um, some animal sounds, some like coyotes from his backyard, mm -hmm and then morphing them and playing with the material, like, and I think that really um, informed also the piece. You know, we talked a lot about like, well, what will people in the future, if there are no waves, how will they experience the beach? Will they turn on a sound recording and put sand on their feet? Yeah. Like what will happen? <laughs> 
or you know just um, these sounds we kind of sometimes take for granted. Um, and Lucinda, do you mind sharing a little bit about the music that's featured in, in the other pieces or how the dancers interact with the music? Well, I think something that's Im important to share really is Benjamin's love for live music. So obviously in, in this program we have two pianists um, and everything that he does, if he could, he'd have live music for everything, but it's really expensive. So I have to say no to that. But I mean, obviously Janie's piece is Stravinsky. A little bit of what you're saying, it's been interesting for me to watch the dancers with live piano mm -hmm. because I notice a, a real difference actually. I think it's probably more difficult to dance with live music because, right? It, it changes. Every it time. changes yeah. every time. So I've been kind of watching that process happening during this run so far last night, which I find fascinating mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because the pianists aren't even looking at the dancers. Right. Yeah. So it's like, should they be looking at them? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, music is very important, obviously, to Benjamin. Um, he's always looking and listening. And, and I mean, I think that his musical vocabulary is beyond anyone I've ever met before. So um, he works a lot with the young composers. He loved Alex's work and what Alex did. And Alex is, you know, he works a lot with Nick Rattel. And I think Alex is the next Nick Rattel. That's how I kind of look at him. I mean, he's amazing. Yeah, and, and on that topic of continuing relationships, um, artistic mm. relationships, first, congratulations on your residency uh, with Thank the company. You. That's very exciting. Um, so the next two years, correct? Um, I guess in with the company being in its 10th year mm -hmm. um, and re-emerging as we all are back into uh, this dance ecosystem that has really been shifted in many ways. Um, I'm wondering for each of you, what excites you most about yeah. this up upcoming oh, year? I'm so excited. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This year is crazy for LA Dance Project, not just because it's our 10th year. Uh, July 22nd is officially the first day of our 10th year, mm -hmm. but we have so much going on at the company. It's kind of mind blowing. We had a lot of pauses because of COVID and Benjamin had created his new Romeo and Juliet piece, which was supposed to premiere, I think three years ago and it kept getting pushed at Le Saint Musical in Paris. So that's happening this year. Um, it's a huge run and we're very excited about that. And Benjamin is using, it's not just a dance piece. It's of course he's using video and Trevor who films all of our mm -hmm pay-per-views is traveling with us and he'll be steady camming on the stage so when the actors exit the stage they're followed by the camera and then you see on the screen what's happening off stage it's really beautiful and that's Romeo and Juliet and we're also performing in Lyon Romeo and Juliet you know we're super excited about premiering Benjamin's new piece Be Here Now at the Chatelet in Paris set to Andy Akiho's incredible music The Seven Pillars and it is so good um, it's an hour long, no intermission, and it's seven pillars. So, you know, there's, each pillar is very, very different and dynamic and athletic, and it's just kind of mind-blowing. So that's happening. And Barbara Kruger, who's a great artist uh, based in California, she's Californian, is doing all the set design. So that's very exciting for us. Again, LA Dance Project likes to collaborate across the board with artists of um, all genres, so it's exciting. Um, and then we are also participating, oh, actually, no, that piece is premiering at the Chatelet in Paris with an added program of three phenomenally talented female choreographers, Madeline Hollander, Bobby Jean Smith, and Osh Schreiber. Are you on that one? Yes. Yes. And um, Pam Tanowitz. So they'll also be part of the program. It's going to be amazing. And it's all live percussion. We're bringing Sandbox who are percussionists for Andy Kehoe's piece, and we'll have a string quartet for the other pieces live. And then we also are bringing Giselle Vignet has created a piece called Crowd. Um, we're bringing that to LA Dance Project. She's performing at BAM and then coming to LADP to perform in the parking lot, which I'm super excited mm -hmm. about. The piece doesn't have a stage. It's set on the concrete with like dirt. It's really amazing. Um, yes, yeah, so we have a lot. And we have a 10-year anniversary and our gala. <laughs> and uh, 
and then I'm retiring. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, and I'm probably missed stuff. And we uh, continue with the app, you know? I yeah. mean, we wow. are continuing with the app as well, so. Just everything, all of mm -hmm. the traveling, the touring, everything. It's so yeah. wonderful. It's intense. I mean, we have 18 dancers right now, mm -hmm. um, which is a lot. It's a lot to have 18 mm -hmm. dancers. I know it's nothing compared to the New York City Ballet or American Ballet Theatre, but for us it's a lot. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but it's great. Wonderful. And Bobby and Orr, what are you two excited about, either in relationship with LADP or your other creative pursuits? I think for me definitely to get in the room with the dancers for an elongated like amount of time, so we get to know each other, we get to grow together as artists, as as collaborators. That's yeah. very I'm mm -hmm. looking forward to. Yeah. Same. I can't wait to dig in more with this incredible team. We were there two weeks ago, mm -hmm. and just the energy in the building, so alive, and supportive, and. Um, ready to take chances and feel very lucky to be supported in that way. So cannot wait for to dig in more with everyone. I definitely mentioned their residency, my little spiel, right? Because yeah. That, yeah. that is probably <laughs> the thing I'm most excited about, to have these two insane beings yeah. orbiting around us yes. all the time. Mm -hmm. it's, it's amazing. Yeah. And I think this is such a rare um, chance as an artist to be given time yeah. and a base to really dive into what you love and we are so excited for that yeah. and yeah. so thankful yeah. Yeah. and we don't want any constraints on that either if they if something amazing comes up for them and an opportunity like we support mm. that as like we don't you know your yeah. growth is the most important thing so we feel that yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah the gift of unobstructed time and yeah. space can bring so many beautiful and incredible things to share with the world and so thank you all so much thank for you. Thank you. sharing your time here today thank you to everyone who's tuning in um, I really encourage everyone to follow LA Dance Project um, wherever they are in the world mm -hmm. online on tour and as well as Bobby and Orr in all of their creative pursuits thank you and I hope you enjoy the program thank you thank you thank you, thank you.